Hi folks, this is the second episode of the Deep Dive series. In this episode, we are going to talk about DeFi, which is decentralized finance and NFTs. So what decentralized finance is? So in the last video, we also talked about cryptocurrencies and blockchains and everything around that. So what DeFi is, is decentralized finance. Just because the cryptocurrency part is decentralized and uh, there is no one central authority, uh, the, the finance part is also decentralized just because of that. So cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrencies are the ones because of their underlying technology, they are decentralized and they pave way for the possibility of decentralized finance. So let's take a look at what, what are the differences between decentralized finance and the traditional finance. So before that, let us take a look at uh, what the traditional finance is. So this is the central central banking system where you bank your money. So these are the people, let's say, who are putting their money in into the banks. So the money goes in. So at the end of the tenure, the bank returns the money with some interest. And if a, if a borrower wants to borrow some money from the bank, the bank provides some money uh, with, with an additional interest on it. So the interest paid by the, by the person who is taking a loan is going to be greater than the interest the bank is going to pay the, the people who are going to pull in the money. And this, is the, this difference in the interest is what the banks are left with and is the income of the bank. So the difference in the interests are what banks are left with. So this is their, uh, their financial gain. So the traditional finance system is very different from the decentralized finance system where you, you keep your money in digital wallets, digital wallets. Whereas in a traditional financial system, you keep your money with financial institutions and after you have banked your money in financial institutions, they are the one who are going to decide who to lend your money to and how to use your money to generate more income. And in the, in a decentralized finance system, it is you who are going to decide how the money is going to be spent. The transfer of funds happen in minutes. So because of the huge bandwidth of the decentralized finance system, the transfers uh, uh, happen happen in minutes and you don't have to wait for somebody to approve your uh, payments and it is more secure than a traditional finance system just because of the uh, the presence of the underlying technology which is blockchain which is immensely more robust and more secure than a traditional finance system and in decentralized finance system the transaction activity is pseudonymous so you can choose either to remain anonymous or you can have your name on it any kind of a name on it so it can be or cannot be traced back to you versus uh, traditional finance activity always leaves a paper trail. So the, the information about the transaction is always going to be there when you are using a traditional finance system. And the most important thing is decentralized finance is open to anyone. So there is no bar. Uh, you just need to have a, a working system, a working PC and a digital wallet to be a part of the decentralized finance system. Versus if you take an example of American Express, then there are some standards, some bar you have to meet, some criteria which you need to follow to be a part of that system. So decentralized finance is open to anyone. And the most important thing is the markets are always open. So it is a 24 seven, 24 by seven market versus the banks only operate uh, in the in the working hours and are closed on weekends and and holidays etc but uh, but the decentralized finance system is open 24/7 so what is an nft you might have heard about this term before with with digital art in game collectibles and music posters and everything around it and people are either buying tons of nfts or are producing tons of nfts so uh, there is a there is a huge frenzy which is going around uh, nfts so what are nfts so nfts are non fungible tokens non fungible tokens to 
So we are going to look at both of these things individually, non-fungible and tokens. What what does fungibility mean? So so let's talk about fungibility. So what does fungibility mean? Fungibility is the interchangeability of things. So let's assume these are the two nodes which you drew out of the ATM. At first glance, you'll see that both of the nodes are same and you don't have any any connection with any one of them. And if you have to pay somebody 500 rupees, you'll just pull out the 500 rupee note, whichever comes first and give it to the other person. But let's say ki this note, this particular note was given to you by your grandmother. Now you have some some emotional value associated with the money, uh, with the note as well. And the monetary value of the note doesn't matter to you anymore. So even, even though the, even though both of the notes are same, practically the same, you have some value associated with one note, which makes it more valuable in your eyes than the other one. Even though the physical form of both of the things are same, the two things are not fungible anymore. So the underlying asset can be anything. It can even be an image, uh, a video file <clears throat> a piece of music a legal document or any kind of document anything which can be represented in digital form can can be tokenized so you are essentially converting all of the meaningful data into a representation of it so a random string of characters is generated to lead you to the asset and not the not to own the asset so you can give this number to anybody who wants to verify if you are the owner of the asset but they are not in the position to change the ownership of the asset so this will only represent the asset and not the ownership now a key difference to understand here between tokenization uh, tokenization and encryption is in encryption, we are using mathematical formulae to convert data into its encrypted version. It is also necessary to understand that the encrypted version can be decrypted back to its original form. But when you talk about a token, when the asset is represented in its token form, the token will never lead back to the original asset. So you can have your digital art in your PC uh, and you can tokenize this entire thing with, with a digital signature and everything. So this entire art piece will be converted into a token. And this token will be circulated in the market and not the exact image, not the original image. So this is the power of tokens that it helps in representation of the objects without giving, without giving, without putting out the original into the market. So to sum up NFTs, non fungible tokens, the non fungibility part shows that there can only be one of a kind. So an NFT is only one of a kind and it is a token. This is a token which is there to be circulated in the market or represent the ownership of the asset. So because NFT also work on the principle of blockchain, because NFTs also have the underlying technology as blockchain, they inherit all of the, all of the features of the blockchain, which are decentralization. Uh, the transparency and immutability so if you are the owner of a if you are the owner of an nft you are always going to be the owner of an nft unless you so uh, unless you sell the nft so this comes under immutability that nobody can deny your ownership the transparency part is if you if you sell your nft it is always going to be transparent if you buy something it is always going to be transparent so you cannot keep keep the system in the dark uh, and produce NFTs out of nowhere and produce uh, digital currencies out of nowhere. So the, the whole system is transparent from where did you get your digital currency or the NFTs and where did it go finally. It is very easy to prove ownership of the token. So because the token has the data of the asset, a timestamp and a digital signature of yours, it is very easy to prove the ownership of the token just because of the signature part you determine the scarcity of the NFT. So if you are producing, let's say 100 of the same NFT uh, that are ever going to be in circulation. So there are hundreds of these. There can, there cannot be a 101th uh, NFT of the same kind. So the, the, the NFTs which are going to be there is limited in number. 
So when, whenever you are putting out an NFT, you are the one who is determining the scarcity of the NFT. You can earn royalties every time it's sold. So because there is a big market involved and people buy the NFTs, uh, one, a person buys the NFT, sells it to person two, person two sells it to person three and so on. So every time any transaction happens on the NFT, uh, the, the owner of the NFT or the creator of the NFT can determine while creating the NFT, what percentage is he going to take as royalty every time. So the, there is also a set percentage royalty, which is always going to be there. The creator of the NFT is always going to get a set percentage. This can also be zero. This can also be a, a huge value, like 99% or something like that. But the creator has the opportunity to set the royalty percentage. So even though he has left the ownership of the NFT, he can still get some money every time there is some transaction happening on the NFT. NFTs are the tokens that we can use to represent ownership of unique items. So NFTs, once they are minted, represent the ownership of the, on the underlying asset. The assets have changed drastically. It used to be something very different like postage stamps, coins, notes, hot wheel cars, and something which is tangible. But as, as we have grown into the, to the digital world, so they can now turn the digital content, the collectibles into NFTs. But it is very important to understand that everything which is digital is not the only thing which can be put out as NFTs. The real world assets like deeds of ownership, this can be of anything. So even if you own a car, the, the, the document which proves that you are the owner of the car can also be made into an NFT. So it is not necessary that the underlying asset has to be digital. It can be from the real world as well. But the most use case you will see is the digital art, which is booming right now. So there, there has been a huge upward trend in the number of NFTs, which are based on digital art, which are the underlying assets are digital art. A lot of money is being thrown into the digital NFT segment. So in the budget 22 23 government announced a hefty tax of 30% on any kind of income made by the transfer of digital assets, whether it be cryptocurrencies or NFTs or anything. And investors now also have to report any kind of gains or losses that they have made. Also loss from transfer of such assets cannot be set off against any other income. So when you are filing for your income tax, uh, the profits which you have made versus the losses which you have made during the financial year, you take the difference of them and the net profit which you have gained, you only have to pay taxes on them. But government has uh, said this very straight that any kind of profit that you make in the digital assets, so the digital asset, so these assets are not going to offset your, your net profits from the other investments. So you have to pay taxes on any kind of gain made on digital assets and this the finance minister Nirmala Sitharaman proposed that the central bank would start issuing digital rupee which is the government's own digital currency or the central bank's digital currency CBDC and this currency will also be based on blockchain among other technologies as well CBDCs are legal tenders in digital form which are the exact replicas of uh, the fiat currencies in the digital world so they are basically the online version of the, uh, of the fiat currency. If you take an example of Tether, which is, which is bound to the value of US dollar. So it is always going to have the exact value of a dollar. So one Tether is always going to be one US dollar. So the Indian government is also looking forward to introducing some form of CDBC, which is tethered to the Indian rupee.